want us to worship God for just a moment. We talked about one sound. Everybody say one sound. There is a kingdom sound. There is a kingdom sound. Everybody say that. There is a kingdom sound. Say it again. There is a kingdom sound. And I want you to understand this, that there is always a sound that precedes a move of God. Everybody say that. There's always a sound that precedes the move of God. Whenever you will find deliverance, wherever you will find healing, wherever you find a move of God, it is always associated with a sound. I want us to take just maybe 30 seconds and we're going to we're going to sing this song. We're going to raise it as an offering to the Lord, but I want us to take about maybe just 30 seconds if you will. Brother, I just want you to minister on that on that guitar. I want you to raise your hands in his presence and let's just worship God all over this room. Come on, everybody, let's worship God all over this room. Well, good morning. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. 
This is the day that the Lord has made and we ought to be rejoicing. We ought to be glad in it because the Lord has allowed us, you and me, to see another day. We're so glad to be back in your presence this morning, to come into your living rooms, into your kitchens, into your bedrooms, into your family rooms, into your basements, to come into your home that we might worship together. David declared, let everything that have breath Praise ye the Lord. In spite of what's going on, we can praise the Lord. In spite of how we're feeling this morning, we should be able to praise the Lord. In spite of what we have and what we don't have, how we feel, we should be able to praise the Lord. Why? Because the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And the coronavirus doesn't change God's nature, doesn't change how God reacts, doesn't change God's blessings upon us doesn't change his personality God is God all the time and all the time God is good we greet you this morning in the joy of the Lord hallelujah to you you and you we praise the Lord together let's pray let's look to the Lord from whom all our blessings flow. Father God, in the precious name of your Son, even our Savior, Jesus, who is both Lord and Christ, we thank you this morning for the privilege that is ours to boldly come before the throne of grace, to seek your face, to get into the flow of your blessings upon us. We thank you, Father God, that while we slept and slumbered in our beds last night, you watched over us. And we thank you for protecting us. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for gently touching us with your finger of love this morning and arising and awaking our sleeping bodies, Lord, that we might yet see another day. And God, we're grateful and we're thankful for your presence and your power. As we come together to worship this morning, Lord, we lift all of those who are on our special prayer list, those who are sick, those who are recovering, those who are on on the front lines in the middle of this battle. We thank you even now in the name of Jesus for your steadfastness. We lift up those particularly, Lord, that are walking through the valley of the shadow of death this morning, some that are close to us, our brothers and our sisters. We ask, Lord God, that you wrap them even now in your arms of loving care and protection, Lord. Let them know that you would not leave them comfortless. That is your promise that you would walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death, that you would lift up our bowed down heads, that you, Father, would wipe all of our tears of sorrow and grief away, that you would turn our mourning into dancing, Father God. We celebrate, we celebrate, we celebrate the lives of our loved ones who have gone on, Lord God, due to this virus. We pray, God, that you would give each one of them peace in your presence. We ask it now in the precious and matchless name of Jesus we pray and all the people of God said amen and amen well good morning family Fresh Baptist Church family and our extended family from all points of the country, the county, and yes, even across the world. We come to you in this live stream broadcast, and we pray that something that we will say or do today will lift up your spirits and lift up your head and give you the motivation just to run on a little while longer. All we can do is take one day at a time, one day at a time. I want to read to you. Our scripture this morning coming from Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 28, and I want to look at verses 8 and 9, verses 8 and 9, Matthew 28, verses 8 and 9, and they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and they did run to bring word to his disciples. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Hallelujah. Well, my subject this morning comes out of a statement that 
uh, Governor Cuomo made earlier this week as he was talking about reopening the state and many of our states uh, around the country are preparing to reopen and try to get things back to normal. Well, you and I know that things are never going to be the, the same again, that we are in the process of reorientating ourselves to how we interact with one another and getting into the habit of wearing our mask and putting on gloves and maintaining social distancing with one another. And in the midst of all of this and all that we've been through, uh, I was, I was prompted by the Holy Spirit because I was really dealing with some mixed emotions as, we th as I thought about the country and the state and, and even our county right here in Suffolk County uh, reopening. Um, and I was led to the scripture. This scripture comes on the heels of the women going to the tomb of Jesus and finding that Jesus was not there. Uh, because the angel told them that he had risen from the dead. And, and the angel told them, go to Galilee and tell the disciples that Jesus had risen. Go give them the good news. Well, as I thought about it and I looked at the scripture, it says, and they left with these two emotions, fear and great joy. Fear and great joy. Mixed Mixed emotions. You, you've, you've had mixed emotions, haven't you? Um, you were happy and sad at the same time. Mixed emotions. You were, you were glad. You were joyful. You were downhearted, disappointed. These, these emotions, according to an article in Psychology Today authored by Dr. Neil Burton, talked about uh, these eight basic human emotions. Now, there's more and there's variations from them. Uh, depending on uh, which article you read, uh, you could go from seven to ten, and then you can even have an expanded list because the basic uh, list of these emotions of joy, sadness, anger, fear, trust, distrust, surprise, anticipation, all stem from these basic eight. But what's interesting to me is not only having mixed emotions, but having emotions that are diametrically opposed to each other. <laughs> Joy on one hand, sadness on the other hand. Anger on one hand, and fear on the other hand. That, that is, that is, the, the idea that in the midst of our being, this article talks about some things that are hardwired. They are immediate responses to situations and circumstances. Our, our emotions are a, a, a physical reaction to a mental emotion or a mental stimulation. You walk up on a snake or a bug and immediately there's fear. We're surprised when someone jumps out in front of us. These are automatic responses, or according to, uh, to Dr. Burton, they are hardwired. We don't have to think about them. They are immediate. Have you ever watched a baby? A baby has emotions. A baby can cry. A baby can show emotion of sadness, and with a great big smile can show you emotions of happiness. Our animals have the same hardwired automatic response. When a dog sees you and the dog is happy, that dog just wags their tails and they jump around. But yet when they've done something wrong and you scold them, they immediately drop their tails and some of them may even fall to the floor in humility and submission. Here in the text, these women are confronted with two emotions. The scripture says that the, on one hand, they were fearful, and on the other hand, they had great joy. At that moment, at that moment when they realize and they've gotten the news that Jesus he has arisen, that he's no longer in the tomb, they are confronted with these two emotions. 
Well, maybe you haven't gotten with me on this, this thing of uh, mixed emotions or um, emotions that are diametrically opposed to each other. So let me, let me, let me touch some of you that maybe you haven't been in church all your life. Uh, let me, let me just grab uh, the gospel according to Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock. Joy and pain. It's like sunshine and rain. Yeah, you got that one. You know that one. Yeah, joy and pain in the same place. When have we had pain that gives us joy? Come on, somebody. We find ourselves caught up in the midst of this conversion of two emotions, joy and pain, happiness and sadness. We're up and we're down, even at the same time. Some people might say that we have some psychological issues. But here, these women, having been in this mode of grief, this mode of having lost someone that was so close to them, Let, let's pull Mary Magdalene out for a second, the leader of these women, that as they were grieving over these couple of days, preparing in their minds and in their physical response to going to the tomb to see a dead Jesus, a dead Savior, a one who had delivered them, one who had turned their lives around and gave them, and yes, you and I hope. He's crucified on the cross He's dead and buried, and now on the first day of the week, they're going to pay tribute. They're going to worship him in and his deceased body. But when they get there, they get great news. They get exciting news that Jesus is not there, for he is risen. The angel declared, I know that you seek Jesus who was dead, but he is alive and he is risen from the dead. In that moment, in that instant, they went from sorrow to joy. They went from sadness to gladness. But at the same time, there's this apprehension. There's this reluctancy. Do we get excited? Do we really get overjoyed? Do we jump the gun and get excited about the fact that Jesus has risen from the dead? What does this really mean? What are the, uh, uh, the ramifications of the fact that Jesus is now alive? In that moment, in that moment, they find themselves at the convergence of two intersections, the intersection of sadness, intersection of joy, the intersection of fear, the intersection of happiness and great joy. This fear, this fear, as defined by Webster, is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something dangerous likely to cause us pain or threat is imminent. We immediately, we immediately confronted with a situation that rises this auto response of fear when we are threatened. Matter of fact, some psychologists suggest the theory of that when we're confronted with fear or a fearful situation where we feel our lives are in danger, something automatically comes up and we say, do we stay here and fight or do we run? But then there's a third one, paralysis, that we get so scared that we can't even move in the moment. But here, these women are confronted with this emotion of fear to be afraid of something or someone likely to be dangerous, painful, or threatened. It is a basic human emotion. And here they are. At one point, they've gotten some good news. They had some apprehension coming to the tomb because the question is, who was going to roll the stone away from the tomb for us? Are we going to be strong enough? 
only to find out when they get there that the way has already been prepared. Let me park here for a moment because somebody needs to hear that word. You need to know that while you're trying to figure things out, God has already worked them out. While you're trying to figure out how you're going to maneuver, I know that stimulus is already gone, but how are you going to handle the impending financial situations? There's some business owners that are listening to me this morning. You're trying to figure out how you're going to get your business back on its feet and get moving again our governor and our president and others are trying to figure out how we're going to get this economy going back again y'all deal with all the technicalities and the technical issues of getting things back up and running but can I assure you today that God is in control and while you're trying to figure this thing out God already has a plan and God is working God's plan there's fear there's fear in these women because they've heard this good news but this fear is not one of intimidation this fear is not one of immediate physical harm but this fear is uncertainty what do we do with this good news? What do we do with the fact that Jesus has risen from the dead? How do we handle it? How do we process it? What if they don't believe us? What if we're caught on the way? How is the world going to deal with this whole idea of a resurrected Savior? One who was crucified, dead, and buried, but the angel declares that God, that Jesus is no longer dead. He is alive alive. Wow. This fear is not one of intimidation, but it's a fear of uncertainty. Well, a lot of us are at that place today. Fear of uncertainty as it relates to what is tomorrow going to bring? Well, you're better off than I am. I'm not there tomorrow. I'm dealing with today. What is this evening going to look like? What is this afternoon going to look like? The uncertainty of the day. Are we going to open? Are we going to stay closed? Is it going to be extended? What does the summer look like? Is this going to last all the way to September? When are the kids going to go back to school? When are we going to be able to go back to work and, and, and once again assume some sense of normalcy? When is the when are the deaths going to stop? I know death is inevitable and it is it is in the hand of God and God knows the day that we are born and the day that we will leave this place. Job declared it this way, man that is born of a woman have but a few days to live in. That is full of misery and trouble and strife. Yes, we live in a world that is confronted with misery and strife. And yes, you and I have our appointment with death. And no matter how it comes or by whatever reason, it is ultimately at the hand of God who gave us this life. So uncertainty and fear reign supreme in the midst of our situation and our circumstance. It's a human emotion that overtakes us in the midst of uncertain situations and fearful situations. And so it has happened with these women that they are uncertain of their response. They are uncertain on how they handle this good news. Oh, but what does the angel tell them to do? He tells them, the angel says, go and tell his disciples go tell them the good news that that's what you do that's what you do in the midst of this you run and you tell somebody and verse 8 says and they departed quickly king james says immediately they left and they ran they ran they went watch this and as they were going as they were going Great joy, not just joy, but great joy. They're overcome with another emotion, joy and happiness, excitement. Oh, begin to feel their spirit. I can, I can only uh, imagine how their pace from the tomb to Galilee begin to pick up as they thought about the responses of the disciples. Truly, these morning disciples are going to be happy. Truly, they're going to 
be uplifted. Truly, we can turn their midnights into midday. That we can turn their mourning and their sadness into joy and happiness with this news immediately. They begin to run and to tell them their, this good news. Joy, joy is not necessarily happiness. Someone said something has to happen for you to be happy. But joy is different. Joy emanates from the innermost of our being. It is rooted and grounded in an unchangeable fact that no matter what happens, we have joy. The scripture tells us the joy of the Lord is our strength. In the midst of everything that's going on and circumstances that confront you each and every day, if your confidence is in the Lord, but no matter what's going on, you will have joy, joy unspeakable, joy full and free, joy that cannot be compromised, hallelujah, or even compared to sometimes. It's just overwhelming. Is there anybody that's got joy this morning? I know that things look bleak around you. I know that it is hard to be happy and exciting and joyful in a moment like this. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that the Lord has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. These women were immediately overcome with fear, but their fears were put arrested by their great joy. And as they were going, as they were going, we see their fear fear. We see their joy. But lastly as they were going, we see their worship. Oh, I feel like preaching this morning that as they were going to spread the good news, as they were going to do just what the angel told them to do, as they were on their way to lighten up somebody else's day, as they were going to turn somebody else's life around, as they were going to do what the angel told them to do. Wait a minute. Watch out. Jesus appeared in the midst. Look at it right there in the text. It says, and behold, Jesus met them and greeted them. Hallelujah. King James said, all hell was the response of Jesus. Jesus, take heed. This is the first time that these women who have heard the good news that Jesus was alive, that they're able to see him face to face face in the midst of their mixed emotions Jesus shows up in the midst of, in the midst of their fear and intimidation Jesus shows up in the mix in the midst of their uncertainty of how they're going to handle this news and how people are going to receive this news of, Jesus shows up in the midst of, in spite of everything that had gone on of, in the days preceding this so joy, uh, sweet joy, fill their hearts, their minds, and their bodies. Uh, and their joy is complemented by the immediate presence of Jesus. Uh, let me park one more time. Uh, there's nothing better um, than when Jesus uh, shows up uh, in the midst of uh, your situation. When you're having uh, an emotional attack. Uh, when you're up or when you're down, there's nothing like it. When Jesus shows up and gives you and I hope in the midst of our trials and our situations that when I would have given up, Jesus shows up and tells me to hold on just a little while longer. Let that be a message to somebody. Even this morning, you are not by yourself. Because Jesus is in the midst. Jesus is walking with you. Jesus is talking with you. Jesus is giving us hope in the midst of this trying and troubling and tragic situations. Lift up your head.
says, uh, says the songwriter, and be ye lifted up, uh, and the king of glory shall come in. Uh, who is uh, this king of glory? Uh, the Lord uh, strong in battle. Uh, the Lord uh, mighty. God is uh, our king, uh, our conquering king. Uh, and when they saw him uh, in the midst of their mixed emotions, uh, they grabbed him by the feet uh, and they worshiped him. Uh, come on in the house. Uh, I'm already done this morning. Uh, but look at uh, what happens. Uh, they were immediately uh, consumed and overwhelmed uh, by the human emotions uh, of fear uh, and great joy. Uh, those are human uh, auditory automatic responses uh, human responses uh, to situational stimuli uh, oh but I'm so glad uh, that spiritual emotions uh, trump human emotions uh, because in the midst of their fear and great joy uh, when they saw the Lord uh, for themselves uh, they grabbed him uh, and they worshipped him uh, y'all don't hear me in here they worship Jesus um, when they saw him uh, for themselves. Uh, as they were going, uh, he met them uh, on the way uh, in the midst of our trials uh, and our troubles uh, and our situations. Uh, I know the corona might be knocking at the door, uh, but Jesus uh, is already in the house. Uh, good God Almighty, uh, we can worship him uh, no matter what's going on, let me close to tell you what David said. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. That simply says, in any and every situation, I will worship the Lord. I dare you to declare this morning, I will worship the Lord. If I got a headache, a stomachache, a backache, or my foot hurt, I will worship the Lord. If my bank account is full or is in the negative, I will worship the Lord. If the sun is shining or it's cloudy outside, I will worship the Lord. I will bless the Lord, not because of what he has given me, not because he opened a door, not just because he blessed me with something new, but I'm going to bless the Lord because of who the Lord is. God is my rock and my fortress. God is the source of my joy. God is my strength in time of weakness. Light in the midst of my dark circumstances. God is whatever you need him. Whatever you need God to be. God will be it for you today. I dare you to clap your hands. I dare you to wave your hand. I dare you to stomp your feet. I'm feeling real good because when I think about his goodness I can't help but to thank him should have been could have been or ought to been dead and in my grave but God saw fit to allow you and me to see yet another day I dare you to count your many blessings see what the Lord has done I dare you to take out a pen and just begin Begin to write down all the things that the Lord has done for you. You can praise him for the things. You can praise him for the stuff. I choose, I choose like David just to praise him because of who he is, because of who God is, because of what God is, because he's everlasting to everlasting God Almighty
city uh, in the midst of coronavirus. Uh, God is still God uh, in the midst of sickness. Uh, God is still God uh, in the midst of death. Uh, God is still God uh, in the midst of sadness. Uh, God is still God. Uh, and in the midst of all of that, uh, because he's still God, uh, I've got joy, uh, unspeakable joy. Uh, I've got joy uh, down on the inside uh, because God God is God. He's still in control. And he's keeping me. He's protecting us. He's leading us through dark valleys. God is. God is my joy and sorrow. God is my everything. Is he your everything? Is he your all in all? Is God your everything hallelujah hallelujah God is God is God is our everything I wish I had a choir this morning I wish I had a choir this morning that could just sing a little bit of that but I know you're singing in your homes I know that you are excited I know that you are rejoicing that in the midst of our mixed emotions in the midst of our conflicting emotions there is one spiritual emotion that trumps it all and that is worship of God that is worship of our almighty king hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 bless his name, hallelujah, bless the Lord's name, oh glory, oh glory, God is our everything, God is our all and all, and maybe you're out there today and you don't know this God, you don't know the God that loves you so much that God gave his only begotten son Jesus that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I offer to you, my brother, I offer to you, my sister, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the one who suffered, bled, and died for the sins of the whole world. The Bible says that while we were yet in our sins, Christ died for us, that while we were suffering from the penalty of sin, which was eternal separation from God, Jesus became and offered that once, that full, that perfect, that sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. And right where you are today in your homes, hallelujah, in your personal private space, Romans tells us this in the words of Paul, if you would confess the Lord, you shall be saved. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. And receive the gift of eternal life. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But John declares these words of Jesus. That I've come. That you might have life. And have life more abundantly. Jesus came to give you life, my brother. Jesus came to give you life, my sister. To that husband, to that wife, to that father, to that mother. To that man, to that woman, to that boy, to that girl. If you know the difference between good and bad. You can accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and allow God to be your everything in the midst of your trial and your tribulation. It's simply a prayer. God, I am a sinner. I accept your gift for my salvation in the person of your only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, come into my heart. I receive your gift I receive you right now in the forgiveness and the pardons of my sin receive me as your child write my name in the Lamb's book of life give me that gift of eternal life well beloved if you've confessed Jesus this morning you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior you've accepted by faith God Jesus' sacrifice on your behalf the Bible says you're saved. You're covered by the blood of Jesus. And now you have joy, unspeakable joy. In the midst of all that's going on, your life is sealed. Your soul is covered, even unto the day of redemption. We need to let you know that we love you. We're praying for you. 
keep the faith, stand strong even though we're standing apart. But in God, we are all standing together as one body in Christ Jesus. Wherever you are, wherever you're going through, just lift up your hand, face it towards the TV, your computer, your phone, and pray with me. God, we thank you and we bless you right now for the souls that have given their lives to you. You know where they are. You know who they are. You know their situation and their circumstances. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus. God, we also lift up those who might be listening to us that are sick or maybe family members that are interceding for members of their family that are sick. We ask, Lord God, that you touch right now in the name of Jesus. As we gather around this extended altar of our TVs, our phones, our computers, hallelujah, our laptops, we gather around this extended altar and we look to the hills from which cometh our help. We know that you can and we know that you will move on our behalf. You said in your word that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. And we believe right now that as we touch virtually we touch and agree hallelujah that god you're able to fill in the gaps that you're able to make the connections that your power will be manifest in this broadcast today <clears throat> we thank you we bless you we praise your holy name keep us lord god in your perfect peace and we ask these and all blessings in your son even our savior jesus who is both Lord and Christ, we pray. And all of the people of God said, Amen. Well, God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I know you got a whole ball of mixed emotions, but in the midst of your emotional roller coaster, find time, find time to worship him. Find time to give him praise, honor, and glory. Because God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Now unto him who is able to keep you and me from falling and to present us faultless before his divine majesty with exceeding great joy, be power, dominion, and peace from henceforth and forevermore. Let the redeemer of the Lord say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you until we see you again. Be blessed and stand strong.